from around the globe. It's theCUBE, with digital coverage of AWS reInvent 2020. Special coverage sponsored by AWS Worldwide Public Sector. Hi, and welcome to theCUBE virtual and our coverage of AWS reInvent 2020 with special coverage of the public sector. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight. Today we have two guests for our segment. We have Kevin McCallum Jr. He is the Chief Technology Officer at Maximus. Thanks for joining us, Kevin. And we, have Steve, <laughs> and we have Steve Zipperman, who is the Vice President of Consulting Services at Insight. Thank you so much for coming on the show, Steve. Thank you, Rebecca, for having us, appreciate it. So I want to start by asking you both to tell us a little bit more about your companies. Uh, Kevin, let's start with you. Tell us a little bit more about Maximus. Yes, uh, thanks for having me. Uh, Maximus is a 40-year-old company. Uh, we partner with state, federal, and local governments to provide communities with critical health and human service programs. Uh, we leverage extensive experience uh, to develop high-quality services and solutions that are cost-effective and tailored to their unique needs. Uh, one of the things that we do is offer governments the ability to implement programs rapidly and uh, scalable so that we can focus on the automation and their operations. We do services from Medicare to Medicaid, welfare to work, and we have comprehensive solutions that help the governments run effectively and efficiently. Great, Steve, tell us a little bit about Insight. Yeah, sure. Um, Insight is a Fortune 500 company. You know, uh, in 2020, we'll roughly do, you know, probably eight plus billion dollars in revenue, a uh, global company. You know, we have thousands of strategic relationships, um, but I'd say we have probably a couple hundred partners we focus on. Um, one of those key partners to us is AWS, right? As we go to market, um, as we start, uh, you know, working with our customers around the transformation of which we're going to talk a little bit about that today with Kevin. As it relates to uh, Insight Public Sector, it's a pretty sizable part of our business. Uh, you know, we'll do about a $1.5 billion in uh, revenue. We have 200 plus uh, contract vehicles we'll work with uh, out there, uh, over 500 plus teammates. And we're seeing that business grow quarter over quarter, 20% growth. So it's a big investment for us and really looking forward to hearing Kevin talk about Maximus uh, to the team, because obviously it's a big lever for us for uh, Insight Public Sector to get the word out there about the great transformation work we do with our customers. That's a great segue. So let's go back to you, uh, Kevin, and talk a little bit about Maximus's cloud transformation. Why did you hire Insight for, to, to help you with this? Yeah, as, as, as we started our journey, one of the things we realized is as we were moving to the cloud is the experience, we needed a trusted partner. And we ran an RFP process looking for partners out there that have done it, uh, that have done major data center programs, you moving large companies. You know, we're, we're moving about 6,000 workloads, uh, 160 plus applications. So it was not a light or easy project. And Insight fit that. Uh, as we went through the interview process, it became very clear that they have done this for Fortune 500 companies in the past. And it, their experience is beneficial to helping us drive to the future. And the other factor is, is we wanted to make sure that once we were done with the project, we had the experience internally um, that they helped us with uh, to drive forward. So talking about the importance of a trusted partner, which is such a key component of digital transformation, cloud journeys, tell us a little bit about the, the strategy tied to the data center transformation and why you chose AWS. Sure. So as, as we started doing our research, uh, we did analysis across all of the cloud providers that were out there. AWS is a clear leader in the marketplace. Uh, their technology is better aligned with what Maximus has as the underlying technologies. We're a, a majority of Linux based. We also have Windows, we have Oracle, which with the AWS depth and breadth of our offerings tied better to what we had. The other thing we were looking to do is get rid of our monolithic uh, off the shelf products and use more of the cloud based products that are out there. Amazon has a very deep uh, native technology that allows you to replace your old services where you had to bolt on or purchase another product to something that is integrated and streamlined, you know, down to how do you monitor your systems? How do you do logs, things like that. And, you know, as we looked at the timeframe we had to deliver this, 
they had to be able to grow with us. So as we were building out new infrastructure, uh, we're able to build where previously internally with, with data centers, you have to buy infrastructure, you wait for it to arrive, you install it. Amazon has it at the click of a, a button. So we're able to basically have environments stood up in a day rather than having to wait weeks for it. So, and the last thing was uptime. So, you know, Amazon, they're five nines plus in uptime. And most of our contracts are three nines or better uh, requirements. So we had to find a, a vendor that had multiple availability zones and regions that allowed us to be flexible in how we deployed. So talking about the convenience and the ability to streamline and also the need for flexibility. In the COVID era, of course, the, the word hybrid work environments has taken on a new meaning, but I want to ask you about how you see the hybrid era in the long term affecting Maximus. Yeah, since Maximus is a government contractor, we will always be in a hybrid uh, setup. So some of our contracts are very restrictive, especially when you get into IRS, DOD, and some of those uh, agencies. You have a FedRAMP requirement as well with some of the federal agencies. So some of those components will have to stay internally. So where we can force uh, uh, you know, moving to the cloud because of the flexibility we have to deploy, that is the route we'll go. Um, COVID has introduced a new complexity uh, when it started back in March, you know, Maximus had 30,000 or so employees and we instantly were thrown into, uh, you got to make those employees, get those employees to work from home. So we used Amazon's workspace to push our employees to work from home where, you know, some of the employees and some of our contracts are uh, customer owned equipment. So we couldn't actually take that equipment home. So we had to move to a BYOD model on Amazon Workspaces in order to get the users to work from home. And the complexity of that uh, with what Amazon has to offer allowed us to quickly move over 25,000 employees onto Amazon Workspaces and work from home. And then keeping the data center migration moving in the middle of it has also been a, a challenge. So we will, in our federal space, still have internal data centers. The integration points that Amazon offers with their interconnects is key to how we make it a seamless process because we may have a business unit that has stuff sitting in the data center and at Amazon and they have to look as a seamless package. Steve, I want to bring you in here a little bit uh, into this conversation. Cloud transformation, digital transformation, these are, these are difficult and huge undertakings in the best of times. Mm -hmm. How does this pandemic, this health crisis, emergency, how has that affected the way you help your clients, the way you work with your clients, collaborate, communicate? Talk a little bit about the effect of COVID on this. On this yeah, so I would, um, I'll answer that question in a couple different ways. So I would agree with Kevin, because, you know, you think, Forget about what we do with our customers. You know, we had to pivot it really quick too, right? All, all remote workforce. You know, I think about my team, you know, a thousand plus teammates, everyone's 80% travel, all going in <clears> the <throat> blink of an eye, right? Um, so everybody working remote, everybody working from their homes. And, um, and the, but the challenging part was working with their customers. And, um, you know, I look at, uh, you know, I look at with Kevin, you know, I've never met Kevin in person. You know, frankly, and uh, and there's teammates that have come on um, to our to the project and executing the, executing this program remotely, so it makes it that much harder working with the customer. Um, you know, doing more video chats. You know, our methodology is built to be all remote. We have a proprietary tool called Snapstart that allows us to be able to scan environments. All that things done remote. Migrations can be done remote. The hard part is when you have to go on site because there's, there's stuff you have to go on site for around physical inventory to look at the equipment, but it just makes it that much harder. You know, I think you're taking advantage of these video tools like we're doing today. You know, I can't tell me how many Skype, you know, how many calls I've been on with Kevin uh, like this and uh, with his peers and with his leadership. Um, but communication is really important to a program like this because, you know, in a program like this, there will be problems. Right. And there will be challenges. And, um, you know, getting on a call and being able to look at Kevin face to face and see what his reaction is, is really key. But you got to work that much harder. You got to work that much harder now in the pandemic. You know, I have uh, other projects right now, I'll leave it with this, other projects that, um, frankly, we have sold all remote and we're doing it all remote. And what I'm seeing with the pandemic is an acceleration of digital transformation. So other similar projects like we're doing with Kevin, we're doing for other large Fortune 500 companies because it's an acceleration of, hey, look, we got to be all digital now. 
So it'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, how the pandemic affects us long term, because it is definitely accelerating out their digital transformation. If you haven't done it, you're in trouble because it's going to eat your company alive. So Kevin, he's talked. He talked a little bit about. Steve talked a little bit about the importance of communication, particularly when work. So many people are working from home. Um, talk a little bit of, about other best practices that have emerged. Things that you have noticed. Things that you advice you would have to your peers. I mean, as 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 we heard from Steve, if, you, if you're not there yet, you're in trouble. But for the for the people for the executives out there who are watching this, what advice would you have for them? Yeah, I, I think that. You know, this this is brought to light. You know, there was always a view that you had to be in an office on a whiteboard and actual actually functioning in that fashion. So, you know, before the pandemic, I was traveling three weeks a month, uh, and now not traveling, I feel that I actually get more work done. I actually feel that I'm closer to the team just because we've introduced a lot of different digital channels. So now we have Slack, we have Teams, we have, do Zoom. I require everybody to be on a on video, whereas previously, before the pandemic, you'd rarely have anybody on video. Um, and you've seen a, a transformation as people pick up the phone a lot uh, quicker than they did in the past. So it has actually, I believe, brought the team closer together because now you know everybody's on. Um, the downside of it is everybody's on all the time. So you've also had to have people step away from work because generally when they take PTO, they leave the office, they go somewhere with their family. Now it's you're kind of at home. There's not much to do. And you kind of have to force them to take the time off. Um, one of the major factors that has, has been interesting is we're doing this transformation in the middle of COVID with moving all of our resources to home. So we've, we've had to take pauses to focus on getting everybody to work from home. Okay, now they're work from home back to the project. And, you know, it's kind of changed the timeline a little bit. But in the end, you know, we have some hard deadlines to meet. So it's been an interesting transition. You know, Kevin, um, I want to agree with you. Two points is, uh, you know, I think we're also getting not only your time, but also senior leadership that I think, frankly, we never would have gotten. You know, I've talked in the, you know, your peers and your leadership, like I would fly for those meetings. I think about all the time that I've saved, but yep. then again, it never ends, right? It never, it begins and never ends. And, uh, you know, one of the things I'm concerned about is, you know, the long-term burnout factor for these folks, because, and depending upon what state you're in, it never ends. You don't have anywhere to go, right? And, um, you know, I, I think about teammates. I think, you know, Kevin and I have talked about this related to our project. Like, burnout's a real thing right now, for sure. Eight, eight nine months into this thing, it's a real thing. Is people all they have to focus on is is work sometimes. So it's a, it's a concern for all of us as a project team as we start look at uh, executing this, continuing to execute this program for the next year. And it really highlights the, the importance of visionary leadership and a leader who cares, who's empathetic, who is checking in with his or her team and making sure that the colleagues feel appreciated and, and cared for. Um, I want you both to just give us, look into your crystal balls a little bit and talk about the where you see things 12, 24 months from now. Hopefully there will be a vaccine and, and we will return to somewhat of a, of a new normal. Um, talk a little bit about where you see the Maximus transformation in two years. Absolutely. Yeah, start with you. So, uh, yeah, so, you know, our, our cloud migration, we have some hard deadlines through next year. So we have a focus with Insight to get that completed by September of next year because our data center contracts are up and we've got to get out. You know, one of the, the advantages of where we're headed is to move into more of a DevOps model where you know, you're able to enable groups that have previously not been able to do work um, just due to the way the infrastructure was set up. You're now enabling them to do deployments, get into production and have full stack ownership. That's really where our focus is, is the enablement of the teams that couldn't do the work previously because now you're in a different type of environment. Um, the other thing is being able to uh, be more agile. So as we move forward into the cloud journey, we as a company are, are uh, can start contracts quicker. We are part of the you know contract tracing uh, and unemployment insurance. We've done a lot of contracts with the states that you know previously most of our contracts are anywhere from a sixty to one hundred and twenty day startup. These contract and uh, contact tracing and COVID projects, we've had to start them up in three days. That's having five hundred uh, employees online on workspaces 
on Genesis Cloud and fully functional. And it's, it has been a challenge, but it also has introduced a, a better way to do business because now we can we can move quicker for our customers and we can get contracts where they come and say, hey, I need something in the next couple of days. Uh, if you look further down the road, you know, it's taking the advantage of what Amazon has to offer, you know, moving from our more monolithic programs like, you know, we sit on Oracle on Linux today, you know, we can move into Aurora, which then opens up the doors and floodgates because then you manage VR a little bit differently, you manage your data a little differently. That's really where I think, you know, the, the market's going and where we can actually transform our business even better to where we can be more flexible, we can uh, start up quicker and, you know, be do more things for our customers. Steve, final word from you. I mean, I think it's going to be a hybrid world, right? It's at least in the short term. And, um, you know, we believe it's all about the workload and getting those workloads or applications, uh, you know, in, in the right spot, whether it be public or private and helping our customers with that journey. You know, just to pile on with uh, what Kevin talked about around DevOps, once you get a guy to get, once you get all the stuff over there, you still got to manage it, whether it's in AWS or, uh, you know, on-prem, you still got to have a process to do that. So we see a lot of opportunity around uh, modern IT operations and helping with that. And uh, we want to continue to be a trusted partner to uh, Maximus. Uh, it's been a great relationship. And I want to thank Kevin and his uh, his leadership team for trusting in us. And uh, we look forward to more uh, more success with him in the future. Excellent. Thank you both so much, Kevin and Steve. Thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Absolutely. Thank you. thank you. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight. Stay tuned for more of theCUBE virtuals coverage of AWS reInvent with special coverage of the public sector.